What if governments, researchers, the private sector and civil society in East Africa all take concerted action towards regional political and economic integration? What would be the impacts of this kind of future on food security for the region's poor under pressures of climate change? What new challenges would emerge? How would organizations and individuals in the region who aim to improve food security, environments and rural livelihoods navigate these futures? The Research Program on Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security, CCAFs, are exploring potential social, economic and political futures for East Africa and what they mean for food security, environments and livelihoods and the conditions of climate change. The process involves the development of scenarios, plausible and challenging alternate future worlds, told in words, images and numbers, developed with key regional actors from governments, civil society, the private sector, academia and the media. Each scenario explores the implication of alternate directions for key regional driving forces. Based on these directions, the scenarios have been developed into elaborate narratives by the process participants. The scenarios are given a numeric dimension by using two global agricultural trade models, impact and globium. Translating the narratives into numbers provides feedback to the regional stakeholders by helping them understand the consistency of the logic in the scenarios and their implications. In the East Africa process, Two key drivers were identified as highly relevant and highly uncertain by regional actors. One uncertainty was, will East Africa become more politically and economically integrated toward 2030, or will a more fragmented status quo be maintained? The other uncertainty was, will governments, the private sector and civil society act proactively to improve food security environments and livelihoods, or will they mainly react to crises? Industrious Ants is a world characterized by the slow but strong economic and political development of East Africa and proactive government actions to improve regional food security. However, there are costly battles with corruption and security is fragile as the region has to deal with new international tensions resulting from its assertion in the global political and economic arena. The region's focus away from export-only commercial crops causes some challenges to compete on the global market, and the region's dedication to regional self-reliance proves to be challenging. In the world called Herd of Zebra, governments and non-state actors are dedicated to a push for development, but mainly through industry, services, tourism and agriculture for export. In terms of food security, environments and livelihoods, there is limited action. Natural lands decline. East African economies are booming, but the region suffers the consequences of a double vulnerability. Only when food insecurity becomes extreme, after food import prices skyrocket, are actions taken to govern water resources and invest in climate smart food production for regional consumption. Lone Leopards is a world where regional integration exists only on paper. In reality, governments and non-state actors are securing their own interests. In terms of food security, environments and livelihoods, the region initially seems to be heading toward catastrophe. However, after some years, many regional state and non-state partnerships become very proactive and, unburdened by tight regional regulations and supported by international relations, are able to achieve some great successes for food security and livelihoods. Unfortunately, this is a hit and miss world because of the lack of coordinated efforts and key problems are ignored. The future called Sleeping Lions is all about wasted potential and win-lose games. Governments are reactive and self-interested, allowing foreign interests free reign in the region. This has devastating consequences for food security, livelihoods and environments in the region. Conflicts, protests and uprisings are common, and every time there is the promise of reform, 
it rarely materializes into any real change. Only at the very end of the period do the first signs of better governance emerge, but the future is still very uncertain. With no coordinated efforts to deal with climate impacts, and only communities' adaptive capacity and resilience, born out of decades of forced self-reliance, informal economies and the ability to share key knowledge can help mitigate some of the worst effects. In a first strategic planning workshop with civil society and private sector actors in East Africa, held in Nairobi on 5th to 6th June, a vision for improved food security, environments and livelihoods was developed. This is the universe we want to create when we're looking at the challenges that are facing the region. But there's the reality that comes in with, the, with, the, with its challenges and opportunities. Insights that emerge from backward through the different scenarios mainly concern relationships with state actors from the perspective of non-state actors. In scenarios where state actors were proactive and worked on regional integration and non-state partnerships and develop creative and concrete strategies for improved food security, environments and livelihoods. In scenarios where state actors were proactive but fragmented, effective but more modest consortia were proposed. In scenarios where state actors were integrated regionally but reactive to issues of food security, environmental management and the support of livelihoods, the non-state actors found it challenging to go against this dominant regional tendency of reactiveness. However, in a scenario where the dominant governance style was reactive and East Africa was fragmented, non-state actors decided not to wait for governments and explored creative new ways to harness the potential of civil society towards their visions. A second strategic workshop was held in Arusha, Tanzania in September 2012 for state actors, including representatives and advisors from ministries of finance, environment, tourism, trade and industry, fisheries, livestock, meteorological agencies and the East African community. This workshop followed a similar format to the non-state actors workshop. The strategic conversations in this workshop focused on how to strengthen the capacity of governments to work together regionally, support regional institutions like the East African community and exchange expertise and experiences. Many ideas and plans related to the need to work together with civil society the private sector and international non-government organizations. I really like the idea of using scenarios because um, in my work we find out that one of the strong things that people need in order to have adaptive capacity, not just to climate change but to so many other changes, is that we need to be able to make forward-thinking plans. And in order to do that, you must have some sort of scenarios. And it will also help you to plan flexibly, knowing that there are different possibilities. So what do I do if this possibility happens? What mechanisms can I put in place to respond to this happening rather than what I think is going to happen right now? So it's a very good thing for helping people to have adaptive capacity. What I've taken with me and I want it to be implemented when I go back home is for our government, is for specifically our ministry that is responsible for financing to put more funding on these sectors as they are crucial to our future climate and food security. The four scenarios were used by the people attending the workshop to develop strategies toward those visions in the different future worlds. This was done by backward planning from a goal connected to the vision in 2030. For instance, improved resilience to climate variability for smallholders and considering what needs to have happened in 2025 to reach that goal. After a scenario has been used for backward planning and some valuable strategies have emerged, the next question is, will these things work in other possible future worlds? In the workshop, Groups of participants who each used a scenario now met with the other groups to discuss the strategies that came out of each group and whether they would work in other future worlds as well. The result of this process is that people identify strategies that may work in different potential futures, strategies that would need to be changed heavily to still be valuable, and strategies that only work in one or two potential futures. I've learned very many things. 
But the most important thing is the, the process of back, back casting, which is helping us really plan for the future. Because you first get your vision, mm. you know where you want to go, and then the back casting process is helping you to get the strategies and all the issues that you have to address in order to achieve your vision, okay. which I think is very good for planning. We came out with strategies which can reverse the negative impacts to the community. Uh, we came out with a, me a methodology or a skill known as backcasting, where you target uh, the most vulnerable areas and uh, they can become entry points, at least to improve on food security of particular communities. And then uh, you do the upscaling within a particular area. In government, I've always been used to planning from uh, the known to the unknown. But this, this uh, new technique uh, assists us with skills to plan from the unknown. As really what we fear might happen uh, and therefore work towards uh, avoiding pitfalls. So uh, I think it is a good technique that uh, we should go and implement. Having multiple policy or management options to respond to these changes is crucial to adapting to future change, whether it is climate change, social, economic or political change, of all these changes linked to each other. Individuals and organizations using scenarios in such a backward planning process can benefit from newly developed insights into the feasibilities of strategies and how to move forward in the short term to achieve impact in the longer term. Backward planning with scenarios also allows them to provide options to other organizations and governments for collaboration and action on their part. Strategic planning, collaboration and action are required from actors across food systems to ensure increased food security and improved livelihoods while managing our environmental resources wisely. When I look at uh, possibility of focusing 20, 30, 40 years ahead, we're beginning a journey to prepare ourselves much better than if we did a two-year rolling plan. It's providing space, not only for one uh, approach, but for scenarios, a basket of many things you can choose from. It's probably the most important and most powerful approach for planning at these times when climate change is actually here. It's no longer an imaginary situation, it's a reality.